Hello, welcome to another example video. In this video, we are going to look at a fairly recent when recording uh, and also quite common past year question regarding the photoelectric effect. All right, so hopefully you've watched the theory and we can jump right into the question. Okay, let's read the question together. By reference to the photoelectric effect, explain what is meant by the work function energy. So our work function energy is the minimum energy because photoelectric effect is the escape of electron from the metal surface. So if you want to have a picture of what the photoelectric effect looks like, this is a metal surface. We have the electrons uh, chilling underneath. And when the photons is incident, got this photon, light particles are called photons. Okay, photons. So when the photon is incident, the electrons will receive the energy, and if the energy is enough, the electrons will escape the metal surface. So this minimum energy to escape the metal surface in your CIE syllabus, they use the symbol phi again, is the work function energy. All right, so I'll write that down. I will say that is the minimum energy of incident photons okay so the energy of the photon is following the equation e equal to hf law so minimum energy of incident photons such that the electrons escape the metal surface Beautiful. All right, moving on. In this experiment, your electromagnetic radiation of frequency F is incident on the metal surface. Mm, very nice. Result in figure 10.1 shows the variation of frequency to the maximum kinetic energy. Okay, so we have variation of F to Ke max. Okay, it's worth remembering that uh, this Ke max is our, hang on, this Ke max is the fastest electron. So it's related to the stopping potential. Okay, so from the equation QV, this is actually EVS. Okay, so I'm just going to write out this equation here. So uh, hopefully you know why this is a straight line. If not, maybe I will have to derive an equation later. Let's read the question first. Determine the work function energy of the metal used in the experiment. So I guess we're going to start off with the basic first, okay? So I'm going to derive the equation again for you to see. If I say this happens to you in the exam and you kind of like don't really remember the properties of the graph. So let's recall the, the drawing just now. A bunch of electrons chilling under the metal surface. You have your photons incoming. So the energy provided by the photon is equal to the work function energy, which is the energy to jump out from the metal surface, plus, let's say this electron already jumped out, it's going to have some kinetic energy. So it's the kinetic energy. And this kinetic energy is our Ke max. Okay, I call this the Ke max because this work function is minimum. And when this work function is minimum, now this one, uh, this work function, because this is minimum, meaning the Ke will be maximum. So if we use conservation of energy, energy of photon does two things. It gives energy for the electron to escape, represented by the work function, plus your Emax or your Ke max. All right. So we know the energy of a photon is Hf, H being the Planck constant. This is the work function energy. This is E max. Now consider your graph. We have a graph of E max against F. So we want to rearrange the equation such that it falls into the general equation of a straight line of Y equal to MX plus C. So this should be okay for you by now. So I will write E max as equal to negative, no wait, E max is equal to because we arrange this, ah yes, Emax is equal to Hf minus the work function. 
All right. So comparing to the general equation of a straight line, this is y is equal to mx plus c. So your y-axis is your maximum kinetic energy. Your x-axis is the frequency of your photon. And your y-intercept happens to be your work function, which is what you're looking for. So at this point in time, you may be quite happy. All right, I can find uh, the y-intercept as my work function. And you extrapolate the line. Okay. Okay, I extrapolated the line to the best of my ability. Of course, your line is going to be straighter than mine because life is hard when you're trying to draw a line, a straight line on one note. But I think we have a problem here. If you are thinking to yourself, there is no way on earth I can meaningfully find the y-intercept. Okay, this is good enough, right? Because it's out of scale and you might be sitting there feeling a bit sad. What do I do? Don't worry, okay? There's another way for us to find the work function. That other method is to actually consider, since we can't find the y-intercept, maybe we can find the horizontal x-intercept. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line to say, I will let ke max be 0. So there are a few implications of ke max being 0. The first one mainly is when your maximum ke is 0, it means that the energy of the photon or just is equal to your work function because you're going to substitute 0 here. Ma. So what you have is E photon, or basically I'll just use hf. hf is equal to the work function. All right, because this, this E max here becomes 0. All right, so if hf is equal to work function, and work function is hf naught. This is your threshold frequency. So if you want to find the work function, you can. Okay, that would be this one is your uh, axis, right? Because your ke max is zero, and then this f is your x, the value of x. So I can say that this f is equal to work function over h. That's one way to look at it. But what I much prefer is hf will be equal to hf naught. Because once I can find the threshold frequency, I can find the work function. Now. So up to you. Lah. We are already there. Okay. So don't forget this uh, f is the value of your x-axis. Okay. So then this f is equal to your f naught. And this is your threshold frequency. So if I read correctly from the graph, my threshold frequency is, load, there we go, 5.4. No, this one is this today. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 5.4. Again, there's a prefix hiding here. Don't forget the free prefix. So it's 5.4 times 10 to the power of 14. So I'm going to transfer it up here. The, I will just say from the graph or from the diagram, the threshold frequency F0 is 5.4 times 10 to the power of 16, right? 14, 16. I have the memory of a goldfish. Ah, 5.4 times 10 to the power of 14. Okay. So once you have your work function, I mean your threshold frequency, you can then say hence, work function energy is H F not 6.63 times 10 to the power of negative 34. Plan constant is given to you in the front page of your formula sheet. And this will be 5.4 times 10 to the power of 14. And that will give you your work function energy. Okay, so this one is um, 3.3.58 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joule. Of course, it's going to be small. We are talking about electrons. Okay, so if you get like very big, uh, something is wrong. But if you get something really small, like negative 30 something, something is also wrong. So around the order of E volts is where we would, we would like to be. Negative 19, negative 18-ish. Okay, moving on. Work function energy, speaking of E volts, in E volt, for some of the metal is given in table 
。So you have tungsten, potassium, magnesium. Okay, determine the metal used in the experiment and show your working. Hoo hoo, show your working. One mark. Okay, so I guess right now you will obviously want to find three point five eight lah, because that would be the closest one, right? Okay, but before we can compare, then we have to compare apples to ap op apples, meaning we have to convert the unit lah. Okay, so this one is joule. So I guess I think I'll convert the three point five eight times ten to the power of negative nineteen joule to e volt. So just a reminder, if you want to convert joule to e volt, you will divide by the electronic charge. Okay, so I will say that the work function energy. Which is three point five eight times ten to the power of negative nineteen divided by one point six times ten to the power of negative nineteen. The electronic charge. This is equal to two point two four. I guess that's the closest one. Two point two four. Uh, e volt. Okay. Later, I'll show you the mark scheme, lah. All right. So if let's say you keep to three SF like I consistently do, then you will notice that okay, lor, you cannot get the possible answer, but I guess you could make the conclusion and say that the uh, work function energy is the closest to two point two six e volt. So potassium could be the metal. All right. So what I mean by uh showing you the mark scheme is that in this question you are going to refer to the graph, right? So based on the graph, your reading is dependent on this value. But you see, ah, uh, the problem with me reading from the graph is that well, I'm doing this on the computer and it's not going to be as nice as. Yours. So I'm guessing if this is a better straight line, you will get five point four five. It kind of looks like it as well. I'm not really sure. Okay, so five point four five. All right. But if you round it to two SF, you will get three point six. So my answer is not that far off, lah. This one will be three point six here. Okay. But if let's say you take three point six and you divide by one point six, you will get two point two three. So this one is closer to this one now, but it's good enough. Okay. So part C, the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation is increased. So in case you want to think about, you want a way to think about intensity, think about it from the perspective of the when the first time you met intensity. It was very intense. You were studying wave, and it is power per unit area. So this area here is the area of metal, okay? And uh, state and explain the changes, if any, because now we are going to increase the intensity. The maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electron. So we are increasing the intensity. The second thing I need to know is that did you increase the frequency? So there are two things that we can change. We can change the intensity of the incident photons, meaning we make the light brighter and brighter, or we change the frequency of the incident photons, meaning we, uh, change the color. Okay, so we go from let's say red to blue to violet to ultraviolet, etc., etc. So if we are saying that we are keeping this at one particular frequency, this means that your F is constant. So if let's say your frequency is uh, corresponding to ultraviolet, then it will just be ultraviolet. So when you increase the intensity, but you keep the frequency constant. So intensity increase, frequency constant. Indirectly, what you are doing is you are there will be more. Incident photon per unit time, because every photon is still the same size, so you will get more photon because now I have more power. Ma, intensity is related to power, and power relate is related to energy. Remember, over time times area. Okay, so if let's say now the photon or the wave packet is still the same size because the frequency is constant. 
but I got more energy. So this means I got more packets. I got more wave packets. But each electron can only receive one wave packet. And if each electron can receive one wave packet, that means the number, the maximum Ke is still the same. More incident photon per unit time, but each photon still same energy because E is equal to HF. So if each photon still have the same energy, what can you say about the Ke max? So from here, the Ke max is the same because each photon will still have the same amount of energy. They don't get extra. All right? So the maximum kinetic energy remains the same or constant. And then if you want, if they ask to explain, oh, wait, they, they did say explain. So the explain would be each photon has the same energy since frequency is constant. So when they say something like uh, one particular frequency, especially if English is, you know, really your second or your third language, well done, you're learning science in the second or third language. Okay, so this when they, say, when they say a particular frequency, it means that this specific frequency and it doesn't change. So for example, if you come to this particular teacher to learn physics, that means it's me la, or Miss Ellie. Okay, particular, so that one thing. So this one particular means one fixed frequency. Okay, so this will be constant because each photon has the same energy. The second one, rate of emission of photoelectrons. So when you see the word rate of emission, this means oh, in one second, do I get more electrons or do I get less electrons? Okay, so this is correlated to the uh, incident photon per unit time. Okay, so more incident photon per unit time means that more electrons will be able to receive a wave packet for every single second, for every single, for per unit time. Okay, so when we increase the intensity, it's a bit like saying that I'm increasing my total energy, total energy increase, but every individual photon still have the same energy. So now I have more photon. No? And with more photon means that there's more photo electron. Okay, so I will say that uh, this one will increase rate of emission increase. This is because uh, with an increase in intensity, okay, there are more incident photons per unit time. Okay, so you actually need to write whether it increase, stay constant, or decrease. So the statement, together with the explanation, is your one mark. So this one mark is a little bit hard to earn. Okay.